coming this evening. I'm really grateful to be here and really excited to share my story with you guys. My, my name is Graham Eagleshaw, co-founder of Future Kids, and I'm originally from Scotland, and as you can tell, I've lost my accent. <laughs> but Future Kids is the largest after-school soccer program in Nebraska. But first, I would like to explain a little bit more of my, my background to give you guys a bit more context as to, to why we're here tonight. I grew up in Scotland, and all I ever wanted to do as a kid was play soccer. That's all I wanted to do, and I dreamed of becoming a professional soccer player. And through the commitment from my family and my, my soccer coaches when I was a child, that allowed me to achieve my dream and become a professional soccer player. And I was lucky enough to actually represent Scotland, the Scottish national team for soccer as well. And I think being a professional athlete helped me a lot in becoming an entrepreneur. I think they have some similarities. Um, for example, you, need, you both need an inner drive, a clear vision, and not everyone's cut out to do it. And because I could play soccer, I was able to attend Bellevue University on a soccer scholarship and travel halfway across the world and come and have a great experience at, at Bellevue University on a soccer scholarship. And yeah, to be honest, the very first place I ever stepped foot on American soil was here in Omaha, Nebraska. So, go, go big red. Um, <laughs> but I'd like to tell you a little story now about Future Kids. And, you know, as I mentioned before, Future Kids is the largest after school soccer program in Nebraska. And, and we deliver high quality soccer coaching services to low income schools and, and communities. But I, I'd like to rewind a little bit and explain more about what happened with Future Kids and, and I'm hoping that will give you a bit better understanding of what happened as well. Um, you know, through the years of me coaching soccer here in America, I realised there was a problem and that problem was that the USA adopts this pay to play model within youth sports and basically what that means is that it's very expensive to like enroll your child in a, a good quality youth sports programme and then that's not really the case in Scotland. So I always wondered for years, like, what happens to the kids and the families that don't have that spare thousand dollars a month to, to enroll in a youth sports program? Because two in, in every ten families are spending a thousand dollars or more per child every month. So the, the families that don't have this money, the, the kids don't get quality program, and that, that's what happens. And to be honest, I didn't think that that was right that these kids would miss out on those opportunities and, and those role models that I got back in Scotland and I probably wouldn't have got that if, if this was the set up in Scotland to be honest with you. So this led to in 2017 we became the very first soccer program at Central Park Elementary in North Omaha. So this is when we had our first ever eight week program and we created our eight week curriculum and the kids absolutely loved the program, it was crazy. Um, this is the word spread like wildfire and the, the kids just absolutely loved it. There was more and more schools wanting our program and at that point I realised no one else was doing this. So we just had such a demand for the program and I was like, man, I'm going to need some more coaches because one school became four. But luckily at that time I was still one of the coaches at this point of the Bellevue men's soccer team over at Bellevue University. So I was able to recruit those college athletes to come and you know, carry out our program for us. So at that point, that allowed me more time to focus on growing the business and, and pretty much telling every school in Omaha about our program. And you know, just to take a look at future kids today, we serve about 600 kids every week with over 450 schools across Omaha and Lincoln. And we're actually about to take the program statewide and go out into the smaller towns in, in Nebraska that more rural towns that maybe don't have the same opportunities as you know even the inner city kids it's, it's a lot different out there and all this is currently done with 25 soccer coaches and four full-time staff members talk about fundraisers our first event that we had this year was called join the juggle when i thought it'd be a good idea to try and juggle a soccer ball for 12 hours straight um, that actually went pretty well so watch out for join the juggle in, in 2020 um, but it definitely hasn't been smooth sailing. It definitely had some obstacles along the way. Um, you know, working with at-risk youth 
it can be difficult at times. That these kids have been through a lot. Um, you know, they have they've been through a lot, and they don't have the best role models all the time. So that that can prove difficult. And our staff and our coaches have to go through rigorous training to learn how to best deal with kids that have had a lot of trauma in their life. So so that's definitely an obstacle, but we're, we're working better towards that. And as we're growing as a company, like we almost had a shortage of coaches because there was that much of a demand for the programme. We were having programmes going at the same time, but at different schools, at different locations across the city. So that was when I had to leverage you know, my relationship with Bellevue University soccer teams, both men and women, and to, to come and help us with the programme. And you know, of course, with, <laughs> with any sales job, you're going to have to deal with objections. So I certainly had a lot of angry secretaries hanging up the phone on me. Um, so sometimes you have to just go down to the down to the school and, and be nice to them and leave, leave the Scottish accent on thick. <laughs> and you know, to, to quote my, my favourite author, Simon Sinek, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And, and honestly, this is why we do what we do. They, they, these pictures are from the Yale Apartments in North Omaha. And in 2018, this apartment complex was condemned for being unlivable. So 500 people were forced to, to leave their homes, and some of those people were our kids that were taking part in our programs in Howard Kennedy Elementary and Hartman Elementary. But, but luckily, they were they were able to still come and attend the program and still have fun and take their mind off, you know, what they were going through in their life. But this is the reality of what our coaches are dealing with every day. And you know, they're in there trying to make these communities better. And, and they are making it better because you know, they're just out there being good role models and you know, they're college athletes or good people and just overall good role models to try and show these kids that you can get better. And, and the reason that we've been successful over the past two years is because of these wonderful people in this picture. You know, these people believe in what we do. And you know, from everything in the background to going and delivering the sessions, these are the people that make it tick. To be honest with you, they are they are everything. To be honest, I'm really proud. I'm really proud to be um, surrounded by these people every day. And you know, because of these people, um, future kids has been able to grow. It's been able to grow and form some brilliant partnerships in the community. And I know we're running out of time, so I've only got a couple minutes to. To mention a couple of these partnerships that we currently have, and I have to mention uh, Pace. Pace are police athletics for community engagement, and they are an organisation that have youth sports leagues throughout throughout the year. And in the summer, they, they have a soccer league, and, and they allow us to enter teams from our school programmes into their summer league for free, free transportation, free uniforms. And coached by our coaches. These are inner city kids getting this, by the way, so they're treated like you know kids in West Omaha paying two grand a month or whatever you want to call it. So they're getting that experience. This past summer we had 12 teams playing in that summer league. So that was about 150 kids playing all summer long against you know other schools and just getting those opportunities. So I'm very thankful for that partnership with Pace. And I also need to mention the Omaha Community Foundation. Because through Bellevue University, this past year I received a mentorship from a man called John Levy, who works at the Omaha Community Foundation. And this past year I've learned so much from John, like I can't even describe what he's, he's taught me. But you know, also because of John, we've had some great, great relationships with other foundations and other organisations. So those are just a couple of the partnerships that I'm, I'm really, really grateful for.